Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Assemblywoman Lisa Krasna is running for Senate District 16. She's here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're pleased to welcome to the program Assemblywoman Lisa Krasna. It's a pleasure to have you here on the program. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I appreciate this opportunity, Sam. You're very welcome. You are in a crowded primary uh, for Senate, and uh, you're running against Don Tatro, who was here last week, and Monica Jay, uh, the former radio host. Um, so it's going to be uh, quite an interesting battle here. Um, how would you describe yourself? Somebody said to me that um, you were mentored in your early days by Jim Gibbons, the former governor. Would that be an accurate uh, statement? That's true. My mentor is former Governor Jim Gibbons. And, uh, and so you, you, you know, have conservative roots, uh, but a lot of your voting over the last session um, seemed to be very bipartisan. Um, your thoughts on that? I am a conservative Republican, Sam, but the majority of the legislation that comes through the Nevada legislature is for all the people or nonpartisan, so to speak. Um, of course, there's always some bills that are either, you know, Republican bills or Democrat bills, but the majority of the legislation that passes through the Nevada legislature is for all the people. It's nonpartisan. Um, were you surprised when Don Tatro, uh, who was appointed to be state senator um, uh, to replace Ben Key Keffer, um, decided he was going to run? Um, I'll leave that up to the people to decide. No, what I'm they asking think if you were surprised. I, I'm just asking if you were surprised. Yes. Okay. It it seems to me that that with these three candidates, that Don would be the more moderate. You would be in the middle. Monica J would be more to the extreme. Am I correct in that thinking? I'm a conservative Republican. I'm not an extremist. I'm not a rhino. I'm a conservative Republican. All right, so let me ask you this, because I'm asking a lot of uh, uh, candidates this, uh, which is, do you believe that Joe Biden is the duly elected president of the United States? So what you're bringing up now is election integrity. Um, election integrity is the number one issue that I hear people talking about, and I talk to a lot of people, uh, Republicans, Democrats, nonpartisans. Uh, people are telling me that they feel that there were irregularities in the election. Uh, they don't like the fact that they don't know who won the election until a week later. They want to know that night, even if they have to stay up till three in the morning. They want to know. 
Um, but that's not practical. I mean, that's, that's not practical, period. I mean, there are always issues in general elections where, you know, results come in. Sometimes, you know, look at back what happened in Florida, uh, Bush versus Gore. I mean, it went on for weeks. Well, then you should tell the people that because they're angry and they feel like election integrity is the number one issue. They feel like their right to vote for their elected representative, the person that will represent them and their government, is their most sacred right as an American citizen. So you might want to talk to all the people I'm talking to because they feel very strongly about the fact that they feel election integrity is very important. You know, furthermore, in, uh, in the special session, we had, uh, we had uh, ballot harvesting become legal. The day before it became legal, it was a felony in the state of Nevada. I voted no on that. We also had universal mail-in ballots. You know, I, I voted no on that as well because people feel that there was too much room for fraud. Now, did we have anything in place? Yeah, we had absentee ballots. And I spoke to our Secretary of State, Barbara Sagafsky, and she assured me that absentee ballots was very efficient. And anyone that requested an absentee ballot, uh, one was provided for them. And I said, well, what about somebody who's sick or infirmed? Uh, she said, Lisa, we have delivered absentee ballots to people in the hospital because they've asked. All right, well now, you, you teach political science um, at Truckee Meadows Community College, correct? Yes, I am an adjunct professor uh, in the political science department at Truckee Meadows Community College, that's okay. correct. When, when you say that all the people you're talking to are concerned about election integrity, um, most candidates go out with a list of either Republicans or Democrats, depending on, on which party they belong to, so that they're knocking on doors of people that are gonna vote for them, or potentially vote for them. So are you only knocking on the doors of Republicans? Well, I didn't say I was knocking on any doors, Sam. Okay, I, well, I you're talking to people. I certainly so. wouldn't give away my game plan on, <laughs> the, on an interview that everyone's gonna watch, including my opponents. Um, I talk to people everywhere all the time. Okay, but are you talking to Republicans? I'm, I'm talking I'm trying to, to everyone, okay. Sam. Okay, and, and you feel that Republicans and Democrats Correct. are concerned about election integrity. Correct. Um, let's go back to my original question, which was, do you believe that Joe Biden is the duly elected president of the United States? You know, I, I don't really have an answer for that because I really feel that the issue is moving forward. What can we do to make sure that people do feel that there is election integrity and their okay, vote matters? Okay, so now there is a difference between the way people feel and the way things are. People can feel that there is a lack of election integrity because of there has been so much commotion about this um, since the election. Um, but the reality is that there has been one case that has, where somebody has been convicted of fraudulently voting in the election. One case, Barbara Sagaski, the very conservative Republican Secretary of State, says that the election was good. All across the country, there are innumerable court cases, and the majority of them have been thrown out. So, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised because of social media and, you know, other forms of communication that people have concerns. But I think the reality is that the election was good. Well, I'm glad you think that, Sam. Now, you were <laughs> elected in the last election cycle, yes, correct? Yes, I was. So what does that tell you? Are you concerned that your election was not good? No, I'm not concerned my election was not good. I am a representative of the people. The people overwhelmingly have voted me into this position as the Assemblywoman for District right. 26. You are very popular. Time in that after district. time after time. In fact, in the 2020 primary election, I had an opponent and I won by 84 percent, right, which but, is but, unheard of. Right, but but if there was wrongdoing, I, I I guess that's that's my point here. You know, I mean, and I understand. If, if you win by one vote, and it counts as one vote, you're the winner and you're not gonna argue about that. If you lose by one vote, you can claim election fraud. And in every presidential election, there are teams of attorneys on all sides ready to go to court 
if they feel that there's a way to potentially overturn the election, right? Um, so, I mean, I understand this, but it, it seems to me that, that if people were concerned about election integrity to the degree that they are, and it was real, that people who were elected and won their races would also be saying, you know what? It looks like I won, but really we need to examine this, which of course is never gonna happen, right? I really don't know what other people will do. I, I can't speak for other people, Sam. But, but you didn't say to anybody after your elections that you were concerned about election integrity in your race, correct? I think, you know, uh, we could go back and forth on this for 20 minutes and, and spend our whole time talking about this. You think one way, I think another. I think the bottom line is oh, well, I'm, I'm not people sure I, are, I know which I way know, you but think. I'm talking now. People are concerned about election integrity. Well, I don't, listen, I'm not disagreeing with you that people are concerned about election integrity on both sides of the aisle. It is a huge issue. But I think that the issue is in most cases moot when you have somebody as respected and as conservative as Barbara Sagafsky saying that this election was good and that so far with all of the objections there's only been one case of fraud and that was brought against a person who claimed that there was election fraud and they were the ones that, that perpetrated it. So, you know, just because the populace feels that there is an issue doesn't mean to say there is one. That's why we have courts and that's why we have all these examinations. Well, I so disagree I'm with you. In if what the way? populace says that there is an issue I, I'm then not it's, disagreeing it's about that. It's my job as their elected representative to do everything I can to make sure that in the next election, in the next session, when I'm the state senator for District 16, that I bring legislation to make sure that they feel comfortable with their election. And that means a voter ID bill. That means people should have to show an ID when they vote. If they can't afford one, the government should provide one for them for free. That means we get rid of ballot harvesting. That, as I said, that was a felony the day before the majority party passed that into law. Universal mail-in ballots. There's way too much room for fraud there. Okay, and, and also watering the, right. down of okay. the signature verification. That, that needs to be much stricter than it is. They should not have watered that down. Um, are you concerned that there will be people who are excluded because of these additional requirements. And, and by the way, I'm gonna throw in, because I've had this debate with people from the ACLU, I think it's crazy that we don't have um, ID required when you vote, because you have to have ID for everything else, and I totally agree with you, and I'm not a person in favor of paying extra taxes, but I would be happy to pay extra taxes to make sure everybody has ID, whether they wanna vote or not. So I'm not disagreeing with you there. But your thoughts? I'm glad we agree on the fact that we need voter ID uh, to vote. Well, I think that we should. I, uh, you know, it's not up to me. I'm not a legislator, um, and I'm not going to bat for this. I'm just saying it seems to me to be crazy that if you want to cash a check, get on a plane, all kinds of things um, that are everyday things that you have to show ID. I uh, agree. If you if you want to go in uh, up until recently, if you wanted to go into a restaurant in certain states. Um, and you showed your vaccination card, you had to show your ID along with it. I mean, I don't understand how people can live a basic life without having ID. But, you know, the law is the law, and, and, and you know, we'll see if you're able to change it. All right, let's take a break. We'll get to lots of other topics, all right, when we come back. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, Season 2, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. 
Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we practiced again and again, and by blazing new trails in large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Assemblywoman Lisa Krasna. She is running for Senate District 16. Your background. We talked about you being uh, a professor of political science. Tell us more. Uh, adjunct professor in the political science department at Truckee Meadows Community College. <coughs> uh, well, actually, I have a bachelor's degree from UCLA, and I have a doctorate degree in law from the University of Laverne College of Law. Uh, I was first elected to the Nevada legislature in 2016, and I have served three regular sessions and three special sessions in the Nevada legislature. It's an honor for me to represent the people of Nevada in their government. And it's something that I take very seriously. I put a lot of hard work and effort and hours into my work representing the people. I'm usually the last assembly person in the legislature during the 120 day session. And you can certainly verify that by asking the cleaning crew who comes around and says, you know, Assemblywoman, you're the last one here again tonight. But the reason I'm there is because the people put their trust in me. And so I read over a thousand bills and I read the amendments to those bills and I do my homework and I do my research because the people put their trust in me. And I always want to make them proud and I always want them to know I have their back. All right. Um Let's jump into some of the topics from your website. Um, you say, obviously, that you're a pro-business legislator um, and that uh, this, uh, Nevada households live within their means, uh, means and the state should do the same thing. Um, and you talk about economic development. So in northern Nevada, it's, it's almost like, and, and I am a pro-business person and I'm a pro-growth person, mm -hmm. but it's almost like we need to... I don't want to put the brakes on, but it wouldn't be a bad idea if brakes naturally occurred a little bit because the growth is happening so quickly. What are your thoughts on, on that? Um, I am a, uh, a pro-business legislator, and I think economic development is good. Um, the economy is everything. Uh, when, when businesses are thriving, they are able to give people jobs because they need employees. When people have jobs, they're able to pay their mortgage, pay their rent, uh, buy food, buy a car, buy a house. Uh, so the economy is really everything. When, when the economy is slow or sluggish, when businesses are hurting, uh, people get laid off. When people lose their jobs, they don't have money to pay for their rent okay, or but their... All right, but at, but at this point, you know, and, and this is my point, is that we need 5,000 homes a year. We're not getting close to building that many homes. The price of homes in northern Nevada has gone through the roof, uh, literally. Um, and the more companies that are coming here are just increasing that demand. And so we're in a situation where I'm fine with all that's here. I don't want to close the door, but are we at a point where we want to stop encouraging businesses for a while? Because if we do, we're just going to create more and more problems for ourselves because of things like housing, roads, et cetera. Well, I don't agree with you. And, um, and the sewer treatment plant, for example, is right. really getting to a crisis point in Northern Nevada. Yeah. 
I don't agree with you. Okay, and that's fine. G uh, give me your thoughts. As a matter of fact, uh, when I saw that Governor Sisolak just uh, brought a $500 million housing plan, uh, I thought that was great, and I immediately reached out to Mike Kazmierski from EDON, uh, who's actually doing a great job, uh, and we discussed the need for workforce housing here in Nevada, not just in the north, but also in the south. Right. The fact that we have uh, mid-level companies who need employees, uh, and those employees might be making, say, $40,000 a year, which is a pretty good salary, uh, they can't afford to buy a house. Uh, they are priced out of uh, uh, purchasing a home, purchasing a condo. Some of them are even uh, priced out of purchasing or, um, excuse me, renting uh, an apartment for themselves and their family. And that's a big reason why some families won't move here to take a job here because they can't afford the cost of housing. So we need affordable housing. Uh, that is something that's so important to everyone. I mean, everyone wants to have a roof over their heads. So we need affordable housing. And I'm actually excited about the fact that we are going to have this uh, affordable housing coming to Nevada, and we're going to have affordable homes. After speaking to uh, Mike Kazmierski, I then reached out to um, Christine Hess, who's in charge of the Nevada Housing Coalition. She uh, broke it down for me even further and said that 50 partners, including the Southern Nevada Home Builders and the Northern Nevada Home Builders, as well as developers, were all on board working together with the Nevada Housing Coalition. She said there were basically four buckets, the multifamily housing and rental housing, that's $300 million. Uh, the preservation of existing affordable housing, $130 million. Affordable home ownership, $30 million. And then the land purchase, which was $40 million. Uh, so together, $500 million in the ARPA dollars uh, was going to help with uh, the affordable housing that we need here and the workforce development housing. You know, okay. The workforce housing. Let's, we're going to take one more break. We'll come back and we'll continue this, okay? Sure. Right after this timeout. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. You have a great hotel here. Mike Pegerman's invested a ton of money into this place to make it just gorgeous. Tell people what they can expect when they come down and stay. A real quality experience, Sam, and the, the, the rooms, you've stayed in them. They're good size, very well appointed, clean, and for about $65 Sunday through Thursday right now through the winter, after you're done with your meetings, you take a nice, beautiful, scenic drive and come stay in a very nice, beautiful room. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. One of the most psychologically damaging things parents can do to children in divorce is disparage one another, which is why I can't believe I even have to make this commercial. Half of your kids' genetics come from this person you're spewing hate about. Your children have the right to love you both, but more than that, they deserve to love themselves. Marilyn York might be a men's rights divorce attorney, but this is for every selfish parent. Shut up! This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Assemblywoman Lisa Krasner. She is running for District 16 in the Senate here in Nevada. Um, so you, you talked about all the positives coming off of this money coming into Nevada, but inflation is causing huge problems. As I talk to people in the construction industry and the building industry, they are having all kinds of problems. Uh, projects are being held back because of, of uh, the cost of steel, the cost of chemicals, s the cost of lumber. Um, so do you have concerns uh, that inflation is gonna cut into all of this? Well, I do have concerns that the federal funds are just one-time uh, funding. And so you put a program into place with one-time funding, and then after those federal dollars run out, what do people do? they still need those services. So who's on the hook for that? The taxpayers of Nevada. That is a concern for me. 
Okay, but uh, what about the inflation side of it? Inflation is also a side. The price right now that we're paying for a gallon of gas, the price we're paying for a gallon of milk, that's difficult for you know uh, middle class citizens, which is the majority of the people who are working hard. Um, okay, so one other quick question here. Um, the other concern is that people are putting out these jobs, because as you say, this is going to create lots of jobs, but 20 people apply for a job, five people show up for the interview, and nobody comes back. I mean, do you have concerns about the employment situation we're in right now? Um, actually, I want to talk about the bills that I, I brought I, we, in the we, last we, session. We, uh, we, we have <laughs> 10 seconds, so. Good. I'd like to talk about AB 102 that I brought for disabled veterans. This was a bill that they were trying to pass for years, and finally, I passed it in the 2021 session with the help of the Nevada uh, Department of Veterans Services, Kat Miller, and two disabled veterans, one who had won the Purple Heart. And that's where we have to leave it. Thank you for being here. Uh, during the break, I invited you to come and debate the other two candidates uh, in this race, and they may be more by the time we get to the end of filing, and we hope you'll come back, all right? See you on the campaign trail, and we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions. And all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, nevadanewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.